What's up, guys, and welcome back to the channel on UFC 307 in Salt Lake City. Pereira versus Roundtree takes place in a couple of days' time this weekend, uh, and I'm going to be giving my predictions and breakdown for every single fight on the card. It's a pretty good card. It lost a fight or two. Mauricio Hufi was meant to be fighting on this card. That would have made it a lot better. Um, Aljo versus Movzal was meant to be on the card, but it is what it is. Nate Landwehr was apparently meant to be on here. Obviously, he couldn't get the fight um but yeah the fight obviously the card did have some fall off but still it's a pretty solid card capped off by a bit of a sort of mickey mouse kind of title offense main event but it is what it is i'll talk about every single fight on the card you guys let me know your predictions in the comments but i'm going to start with the early prelim opener this fight on the card is tim means versus court mcgee now uh, this is a certified unk matchup if i've ever seen it we got court mcgee He's 39 years of age. Uh, if, if you look at his record, you'll see a whopping uh, six out of his last eight fights are losses. Uh, and you can extend that to uh, seven out of his last nine. Or so you can extend that to eight out of his last 11, I believe. Um, so that's interesting. You know, it's tough, tough times for uh, for Court McGee, struggling to get in the win column. Somehow this guy's got a win over Robert Whitaker um, back in 2013. But this dude's an unk. Tim Means also certified unk. He's 40, yeah, 40 years of age. 33 and 16 record. Absolutely nuts uh, to think about. But there, yeah, he's also lost four out of his last five. So uh, I'd say this is probably a loser leaves town. Maybe both of them just retire. Maybe we see the two unks just set it down, set the gloves down in the in the in the octagon after a tepid rain striking clinch fest decision. Um, but my prediction is gonna be uh, Tim Means. I think he's a little bit less washed. You know, he uh, he actually did finish um, Andre Fialo, who, look, he's not very good, uh, but Urus Medic KO'd uh, Tim Means. He got subbed by Alex Morono, not the best look. Subbed by Kevin Holland, you know, lost by decision to Max Griffin. Um, yeah, he caught McGee. You know, uh, I, I don't know why I'm acting like this is like an in-depth breakdown for Court McGee versus Tim Means. You know, he got decision loss to Alex Morono, but he got KO'd by Matt Brown, got KO'd by Jeremiah Wells, and his only wins recently are decisions over Ramiz Brahamaj and Claudio Silva, uh, which is interesting. And I think his last finish, when was his last finish? Uh, I'm trying to find it. His last finish was in 2010. That's a fun fact for you. Um, Court McGee, the last time he got a finish was a submission with an arm triangle choke against Ryan Jensen in 2010 on the Lesnar versus Velasquez card. I'm not kidding. He has not gotten a finish since then. I'm literally not joking. Check his record. Every single one of his fights then have been, uh, or every single one of his wins has been by decision. But anyway, I am going to be picking Tim Means. I think he's slightly less washed. And Court McGee just looks like more of a victim, to be honest. So I'm going to be picking against him here. Uh, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, we got Carlo Esparza versus Tisha Pennington. This is the retirement fight of Carlo Esparza. And she's coming in here saying that she will be retiring after this fight, no matter what, confirming it. So in with that being said, I am going to be picking uh, Tisha Pennington to get the win. Now, Esparza does have some good wins, but she hasn't fought since November of 2022. She's on the same layoff as Michael Chandler, and she's about to make her return before Michael Chandler. So let that sink in. Esparza is now a more active fighter than Michael Chandler. But she's got some good wins. Like, she's actually beat, like, majority of the top, like, 15. Like, Nami Yunus, Janan, Marina Rodriguez, Michelle Waterson Gomez, Grasso, and Verna Jandroba. Like, those are some good wins, you know. She uh, she did lose to Suarez by TKO, lost to Claudia Gadelia. Um, but that was ages ago. So she's got some good wins, but then obviously lost to Wei Lee. I just think she's going to get out physical here. I think Pennington's going to be a bit too strong. Um, Pennington's also fought a lot of the girls at Strawway, you know. Ricci and Dern were both very close fights that she arguably could have won. Obviously, she had a pretty long layoff after the Dern fight because I think she had a kid. But she came back and fought Ricci, arguably won. Before that, Angela Hill, Sam Hughes... You know, but she lost to a lot of the good uh, fighters. She was on a four-fight loss streak to Marina Rodriguez, Zhang Wei Li, Yana Yun Jacek, and Jessica and Uh She also just got a loss to Rose Nami Yunus. So yeah, both of these two, she's got a win against Rose Nami Yunus as well. Both of these two have just fought pretty much everyone. Certified, I mean, you can say the opposite of Unk, like aunt matchup or something. It doesn't really work as well. But yeah, both of these two girls, older in their careers, 35 versus 36. I am going to pick Tisha Pennington though. I think... I just, if someone's coming in saying it's their retirement fight, I'm just not going to trust them to, like, show up that good. Also, after two years off having a kid, I just don't think Esparza's going to look that good. And she's always been someone, um, 
who's kind of been out physical by the stronger woman. We saw that in the Wei Li fight, so I think that'll be repeated here. Uh, anyway, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, we got Ryan Spann versus OSP. Now, I'm going to pick Ryan Spann, obviously, because you just cannot be picking OSP at this stage in his career. Another unk. There's a lot of fucking vets on this card, a lot of older fighters. Um, I just can't pick OSP. Like, as much as Ryan Spann did get KO'd by Gushkov, did lose to Anthony Smith, and did just dive into a triangle against Krylov. He did KO Kutal, so he did KO Reyes, and he did sub Kutalab. So he has the potential to win fights. You know, he lost to Johnny Walker. He lost to Anthony Smith. That's a terrible look. Um, so there, there's some fights there where I'm just like, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if this guy just was retarded and lost. Um, but I just don't think OSP has the power to put him away like a Gushkov does. Gushkov has the power to put you away. He's got athleticism at least. Um, yeah, OSP's 41. I'm not picking a 41-year-old to win a fight. If OSP wins, Ryan Spann should genuinely just quit the sport. Like, decision over Kennedy and Zutruku, fair enough, he actually looked decent at moments in that fight. He got KO'd immediately by Felipe Linz. Split decision against Wash Shogun. Got KO'd by Tanner Boza. Got KO'd by Jamal Hill. Like, there's he beat Menefield, to be fair, but that was four years ago. But, like, recently... He's just been completely washed. Apart from in, Jez- in Zedwiku, which I could see. Imagine, right, if Ryan Spann comes out here and just is doing too much and is trying to, like, get a highlight real KO and just doesn't fight properly, I could see OSB doing some weirdness and scraping a decision. But ultimately, you got to go with the physicality of Ryan Spann, the power, the strength. The ath- he's got the athleticism. And even though he's completely retarded and I would be picking against him in most other fights, I will go with him for this one just because I cannot trust OSP um, to win back-to-back fights in 2024. Uh, Anyway, let's move on to the next fighter. Or next fight, sorry. Next up, we got Cesar Almeida versus Ihor Potieria. I'm going to have to go with, uh, with... What's his name? Cesar Almeida to get the win here now. He lost to Kopolov. He did get dropped by Kopolov in their fight, but then he was kind of putting it on him in the second and third. Kopolov just laid on him, though. Um, but yeah, I do think he's going to win this fight. Look, Iho Pateria, he's been in the UFC for six fights now. Got a, a whopping record of uh, of two and four, you know. And he's just been a victim consistently. All of his losses by finish. KO'd by Negamarianu. KO'd by Olberg. KO'd by Balato and then submitted by Michelle Pareda, got fucking backflipped on. He did beat Robert Brychek, but debuting guy looked kind of mid, and he beat Wash Shogun uh, by KO. So in Brazil, that was just sad. I don't know why they did that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to go with Cesar Almeida here. He did beat Dylan Budka, who, although he's not very good, uh, at least he, at least it's a win um, against a UFC fighter, which is... Well, um, Potieri doesn't have many of them. Um, but this guy, he's got power, he's got that glory kickboxing background, he fought Pereira, you know, he did lose to Kopolov, but before that, hadn't lost in his career, I mean, not saying much, but yeah, Kopolov's good, I think Kopolov would absolutely smoke Ihor Potieria, so I am going to back Almeida, I think this is a kind of showcase fight for them to be like, yeah, we probably gave you a bit of a wrong step here with the, with the Kopolov fight, well, here we go, we'll give you a fucking layup, get a, go get a highlight or KO and prove to people that you can actually like strike and be good and not just get laid on. Maybe Potieri just grapples, I doubt it. I'm going to go with Almeida here by KO. Uh, let's move on though to the next fight. Next up, we got Austin Hubbard versus Alexander Hernandez. Now I'm going to be picking Alexander Hernandez to win this fight because I just don't trust Austin Hubbard. Look, I mean, he did get a win over Mikel Figlak, which was a decent performance. He got lost to Kurt Holabar in the tough finale, and I just don't trust any, none of these tough fucking veterans are good at all, like, they all suck, he's 32, but I don't know why, I just consider him to be like an unk, major unk, um, but yeah, he gets submitted a bit, Hernandez, he's got some submissions, and he lost to, like, the Damon, so, mate, look, he lost to Damon Jackson, so, do I think, um, I mean, he really doesn't have many submissions, I'm looking at his record now, but Damon Jackson, Bill Aljo, Billy Quarantillo, Hanato Mokano. This guy's lost four out of his last five. I Five out of his last six or seven, I think. Yeah, five out of his last seven, four out of his last five. That's tough. Um, he's going to need to get the... Uh, his UFC run has been kind of crazy. Like, he KO'd Benil Dayush and then was just immediately, like, in the top of the division. Beat I, um, Olivier Aubameau-Mercier. Lost to Cowboy. Beat Trinaldo. Lost to Doba. Lost to Moises, lost to Moicano. Like, this guy's had such a fucking odd career. 
But I do think he has the potential to be good. Look, at altitude, do I trust him? Not really, because th- he is known for having shit cardio. But Austin Hubbard, I don't know, I just can't trust him. And I don't think any of those guys on that recent season are tough. The, like, the prospects versus veterans season, I don't think any of the fucking prospects were very good prospects. And the veterans were all just washed UFC fighters. Like, this guy's lost in the UFC. He was in the UFC for a minute. Lost to Davi Hamas, lost to Marco Madsen. Lost to Joe Selecki, lost to Vince Pichel. None of his UFC wins are known fighters, and none of them are good at all. So yeah, I am going to go with Hernandez. I'm going to trust him here. No chance I'm betting on Hernandez, but I'm going to back him to get the win. Bit more finishing potential, I think. A uh, Hubbard could win, but I don't know. I just don't trust him. Let's move on, though, to the next fight. So we got Yasmin Lucindo versus Marina Rodriguez. I'm going to be picking... Yasmin Lucindo to win this fight. She's younger. I think she's got more upside. And I think she's going to be the one making improvements at this stage in her career. Whereas I think Marina Rodriguez, who I think is 36 or 37, I believe, is not going to be making those improvements, is not going to be looking that good. Yeah, she's 37. Now, she lost to Andrade, which is not the best look because at this stage, Andrade should have been figured out. Like, Andrade is not improving in her game. She just runs in swinging fucking left hooks like a retard. And she's shit. But... Any, everyone who's good has figured out Andrade, you know. She, her, she beat Gomez, but she got out grappled by Verna, got taken down a bunch, and got finished by Lemos. So I think on the feet, she's good. She's more technical, I'd say, than Lucinda, but Lucinda's got some speed. Lucinda's pretty quick. Um, and then in the grappling, I think she's got a weakness to takedowns, which I think Lucinda can exploit, because we saw it in the fight with Kovalkiewicz. She did take her down. She did use some grappling in a fight with, I think it was Brogan Walker. She took her down as well. So she does have takedowns. She did lose to Haragi, um, which is not the best look, given that we now have seen Haragi lose. But, you know, you've got to be a certain level of lesbian. You know, Lucinda might look like a small Indian boy, but she doesn't quite look as lesbian as a uh, Denise Gomez or a Ketlin Souza. So I think she was never going to win that fight, obviously. You know, she looks like a little Indian boy, as I said. But yeah, she, you could, like, she looks lesbian, but she doesn't look you know, the same level of lesbian as um, as, a Go- as a Gomez or as a Souza. So I don't think that fight was going to be favourable for her. Rodriguez, as I said, Andrade loss. Gomez win. Gomez is shit. We've established this. At this. Gomez is, again, another certified fucking female unk. Um, she beat Yan Jonan. She beat Dern. She beat Hebus. Like, she's got some wins there. Lost to Esparza. You know, she's got some wins, but at this stage, at 37, there's going to be a massive age gap. Let me check Yasmin Lucindo's record real quick. Um, she's 22. She's born in January, turns 23 in a couple of months. She's young. She's going to be making improvements. And I, you might look at her record and see five losses. Apart from the loss to Haragi, which still was two years ago. So at the time, she was 20. That's a very excusable loss. But then go back to her previous losses. They were all in 2019. Um, she lost in 20, so she lost in 2017, that's seven years ago, she was 15 years of age, that's retarded, she's, wait, am I retarded, no, she was born in 20, when was she born, she's born in 2000 and, uh, am I retarded, she's born in 2002, so she was 15, okay, she's got losses on her record where she was literally a child, um, she lost in 2018 when she was 16, and then she's got a loss in 2018 when she was also 16, and then she's got a loss in 2019 when she was 17. So apart from the Haragi loss, literally all of her losses came when she was underage. Like all of her losses were when she was a Pat Barry victim, if you know what I'm saying. So we got to go with Lucinda, I reckon. She's going to be making the improvements. She's going to be looking better. Viana submission. She's got some finishes on the ground, um, but I just back her control time, and I think she'll look better here than uh, Rodriguez, who I doubt will be improving at 37 years of age. Anyway, let's move on to the next fighter, or next fight. Next up, we got Stephen Thompson versus Joaquin Buckley. Now, I'm going to be picking Buckley. The TKO call is little, just kind of me being risky and being like, oh, maybe he gets a finish on the ground. I think more likely Buckley grinds this out to a unanimous decision. I just can't pick Wonderboy in a matchup against anyone who knows how to wrestle at 41 years of age. Like, he looked okay against Shavkat for a bit. Obviously, we know his striking's good. We know he's going to outstrike um, Buckley if they stand. Holland stood with him because Holland's retarded, whatever, and Holland doesn't wrestle. Um, but anyone who wrestles wins. Like, Shavkat, Balal, Burns, striking matchup. Neil, Luke, look, he wins. KO'd by Pettis, whatever. Lo- loses to Till, that was kind of a robbery, whatever, beats Masvidal, way back, we're going to the Woodley fights. Also, mentioning, this guy is inactive as fuck, 
He fought November 2016 against Woodley, March 2017 against Woodley, November 2017, May 2018, March 2019, again, so mad inactivity here, November 2019, December 2020, so over a year off, July 2021, so like seven months off, December 21, and then a whole year off before the Holland fight, and then a whole year off before the Shafkart fight, and now this is about to be like 10 months off. He's inactive as fuck. He's also getting injured quite a bit from what I'm what I'm seeing, I think, because otherwise why the fuck would he, um, why would he be out that much? But Buckley... I rate Buckley and I rate his activity levels and I think he's going to be improving too. He's 30, he's in his prime, you know, he's got losses on his record, but those were back at middleweight. He's undefeated at welterweight so far, 4-0 at welterweight. Curtis, Amavov, whatever, the Curtis loss is a bit stinky, like, but that's, again, striking matchup, you're going to lose. But like, DeCherico, that's not a great look, and Holland as well. Holland, Curtis, Amavov, and then he lost to Logan Stolli and Jack Gosh back in Bellator. But whatever. Let's look at the welterweight run. Fialio, TKO, Morono decision. Beat the fuck out of Morono, though. Luke, TKO, and then Ruzaboev. Arguably could have been a TKO in the third there because he had Ruzaboev pretty much cooked in that fight. I rate the activity. I think he knows what he has to do here. He wrestled against Ruzaboev. He didn't try and have a striking match with him. He's going to be bobbing and weaving. He's going to be doing the, 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 the diddy boxing. And I think he can get inside, maybe land some shots, but overall, he's just going to be pressing Wonderboy against the ground. He'll be way too strong for him, too physical. 11-year age gap, he's just way more athletic. You can look at the two of them. Wonderboy's quick as fuck, but unless he can stuff takedowns, which I'm not going to back him to do, I do think Buckley can wrestle. I think the UFC is kind of trying to not do Buckley a massive favor here, but they're also recognizing that he does deserve a step up. So I think he wins. I think he gets the decision, grinds out, boring, wrestling pace, maybe get some ground and pound going, maybe we see a TKO on the ground, I've put that as my prediction, but ultimately I do think it's probably more likely to go decision, uh, the decision call is something I back, and also even if they stand, although Wonderboy will tune him up when they stand up, I don't think it's like, this guy cannot stand with Wonderboy for more than five seconds, otherwise he's getting KO'd, like, he's not fighting like Pereira at welterweight, like, Wonderboy's technical as fuck, he's quick, he's gonna tune you up, but he probably won't KO you, like, I don't think he's going to fucking spinning heel kick Buckley in the face. Ultimately, yeah, I rate Buckley's athleticism. I rate his activity as well. I think he's going to look better here. He's going to be improving. I doubt Wonderboy's improving in his training camps or anything like that. He's kind of just rinse and repeat, doing the same thing. And yeah, a year off after the shove cut fight, or almost 10 months off, I don't like it. It's not great. At altitude as well. I don't know. Buckley's also got good cardio, so I rate him to push in the later rounds. And yeah, Burns... Bilal, they can hold you down. I reckon uh, Buckley can do the same. Anyway, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, we got uh, Roman Delizzi versus Kevin Holland. Holland's a slight favorite. I think a lot of people are going to pick Delizzi and go with the size advantage, and I could see it, because do I trust Holland to not just get taken down and then frustratedly slap the ear of Delizzi and act like, why aren't you just standing up, bro? and just whinge in the middle of the fight, like, do I think that's a very high possibility of happening? Yes, but I just hate Delizzi, and I don't want to root for him in a fight, because I have to, I'm, like, forced to root for my pick most of the time, unless it's, like, a very specific circumstance, like, like, I don't know, like, a Volkanovski Makachev 2, or some shit like that, or a Volk Makachev, like, then, obviously, I'm rooting for Volk, even though it's not my pick, but, like, Holland, I rate it, you know, he's done all right recently, and also, I do think his losses are only to really elite guys. Like, MVP, JDM, Wonderboy, Hamzat, Vittori is not really elite. Brunson's not really elite, but whatever. Brendan Allen, Thiago Santos. Like, that's something that doesn't get mentioned enough. Holland, right, he's got mad losses on his record. His record's not great, 26 and 11. But look at who they're to. Brendan Allen, then he went on that crazy fly fight 2020 run. Brunson just wrestle-fucked him. Vittori just wrestle-fucked him. Got, got some wins in the meantime. Hums out wrestle fucked him. Wonderboy just outstruck him. Got a couple wins. And then JDM outstruck him. MVP outstruck him. I don't think Deleuze is outstriking Holland. I think Holland is going to be at a significant speed advantage here. I think he's going to be way quicker than Deleuze, who I think is terrible. Deleuze got tuned the fuck up on the feet by um, also fair, based Deleuze, nicknamed the Caucasian. <laughs> I like that nickname. But... Um, He's got three losses by decision. I think he just gets tuned up here. Now, maybe, again, I've put in TKO as my call because I'm hoping Holland does something fun and finishes him. 
Dalidzi also lost to Vittori, I'll say that. Just slugged on the feet, didn't look that good. And I think the even though people see he gets some submissions and th- people think he's some grappler, he ultimately is just this kind of brute, slow slugger on the feet. And I don't think he's outstriking Holland. And um, who's this guy successfully wrestled against? That's what I want to know. And you might say, oh, he submitted Hermanson. He submitted Hermanson because Hermanson shot a takedown like a retard when he was tuning him up. Hermanson was tuning him up and then he shot a takedown like a tard and then got submitted. That wasn't like, a, oh, Dalidzi, the dominant wrestler. I'll actually, like, search his takedown stats up right now. I swear to God, Roman Dalidzi doesn't secure takedowns, like, ever. I think he's, he's a good jiu-jitsu guy. He's kind of like a Paul Craig with the lack of takedowns, but good jiu-jitsu. And if he gets to the ground, I think he can do well. But Holland's jiu-jitsu is solid. I also just don't think Dalidzi's striking is good at all. And I just don't see him getting outstruck by Dalidzi. I think Holland's way better on the feet. He's cleaner, more powerful... And also, Dalidzi's not some granite chin guy either. Let's see, takedowns. He got one against Smith, but Smith sucks. None against Amavov, none against Vittori, none against Tamanson, none against Phil Hawes, none against Dorcas. He got five takedowns against Lorini Strapoli, and he got a takedown against Trevon Giles, where he lost. And he got some takedowns against John Allen. But against anyone good in his last, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six... Six fights, last six fights, dating back to June 2022, he has not secured a takedown since. So, I'm going to back him to just be retarded and stand up with Holland, and if he shoots, Holland doesn't have, he doesn't have good takedown defense, but he's also not completely useless, and his jiu-jitsu is also solid. Like, when Holland gets taken down, he took down MVP, you know, didn't get taken down by Kiesa, didn't get taken down by Ponzi, didn't get taken down by Wonderboy, obviously Hamza took him down. Tim Means took him down, Alex Oliveira took him down. So yes, if Dalidzi just heavy wrestles and just tries to press him against the cage and be too physical for him, I could... Vittori took him down 11 times, it's not a great look. His wrestling's not great, right? But I think he's got good submissions too, he's got good gear teams, he's got good dash jokes and shit, so I could see him wrapping up a dash if uh, Dalidzi shoots a shitty takedown. But I think he can keep it at range, I think he can tune him up on the feet. I think Dalidzi beating Anthony Smith is not an indicative of him being good at fighting. Um, and also, that was up a lot heavyweight, Dalidzi's a pretty big guy, he's going to be cutting back down, maybe he has a rough weight cut, I don't know, at altitude as well, his cardio looked awful against Amavov, Holland has been actually, I, Holland has fought in altitude before, Holland's always kind of just in camp fighting, because he fights all the time, so I'm going to pick Holland, I think there's like an underdog idea pick of Dalidzi and being like, oh, Holland just gets out-wrestled by everyone, I think he can do well enough here, I don't think he's very good but I think he can do well enough to... And I don't think Dalidzi's on par with MVP, JDM, Wonderboy, Hamzat, or these or Vittori or Brunson, the guys that he's been losing to. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm off. I think I think Holland's going to win on the feet by TKO. Uh, let's move on, though, to the next fight. Next up, we got Kayla Harrison versus Ketlin Vieira. Uh, you know, the, the outside foot battle here. You know, Ketlin Vieira, I reckon, I reckon she can get on the outside and uh, land some shots and stuff to take... Nah, she's going to lose. Kayla Harrison's a man. Um, yeah, I'm just not going to pick against Kayla Harrison unless, like, it would be kind of cool to be the guy to be like, oh, yeah, I predicted Kayla Harrison to get fraud checked and lose. But it's just dumb because if you don't, if you pick against her and she wins, you look like a retard because you're like, okay, you picked against the literal man fighting women. She's got one loss on her entire record. She's got one loss by decision to Larissa Pacheco. Larissa Pacheco is pretty good. I'm not going to act like I watched that fight. <laughs> um, but no, she she wins fights. That's what she does. Um, she did take Aspen Ladd to a decision, but then that's whatever. That's kind of like, in my opinion, that is Kayla Harrison being bored of fighting bums and not being locked in. I think she's locked in now to the UFC. She knows she's got a goal. She's got a target, and she needs to win impressively to get there. She beat Holm, beat the fuck out of her, took her down. Um, Ketlin Vieira, you know, she's not bad. She's not bad, um, but look, what are we looking at? Um, two wins by TKO, four wins by submission. Maybe she drags it out, wins by decision. She beat Pani Kianzad, who's now cut from the sport. I think she's cut from the promotion. That was July of last year. Let's mention that. July of last year, over a year layoff. Um, she lost to Pennington. That's whatever. That was a close fight. Beat home, beat Tate, lost to the Yana Santos. She's just like one of those girls that wins and loses against the Bantamweights and looks mid and looks decent and looks mid. Uh, she's just not consistently good. She's not consistently beating people. And yeah, 
whatever. I just think Kayla Housen's going to win. She's too big. She's too physical. Too strong. Whatever. Has she ever lost by submission? No. What's when's her last lost by? She lost. She got KO'd by Aldana. I could see. I could see Harrison taking her down and pounding her out. You know, pause. Um, but get landing some good shots on the ground, and she gets a TKO, similar to what happened against uh against Holly Holm. I think I think that's what we're going to look at. Did she submit or TKO Holly Holm? It was a submission. Okay, she could she could TKO Vieira here though. I reckon maybe gets a submission, maybe TKO. But I think Kayla House will get a pretty early finish on the ground and then uh, call for the title shot against uh, Pena Pennington winner. Uh, let's move on though to the next fight. Next up, we got Jose Aldo versus Mario Batista. I'm going to be picking the underdog here, and you might think, oh, why are you picking Mario Batista as an underdog? He's not an underdog. I'm picking Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo is the underdog in this fight. I don't know why. I think he's going to tune up Mario Batista and school him and prove why it's a dumb idea to try and feed prospects to Jose Aldo. Um, now, let's look at the record of Mario Batista because he's got some decent wins. You know, Ricky Simone, decision. He looked solid. You know, had some moments. Got dropped at one point, but looked good. Pushed a pace. Now, my worry in this fight is that he can push a pace and gas Aldo out at altitude. That's my worry, and the UFC's done this on purpose to, like, try and get Aldo to lose for some reason, because I don't know why they hate Aldo. For some, Like, it's odd. They hate Aldo. They give him Martinez in a comeback fight, and then they're giving him Batista at altitude. Like, the fuck? This guy deserves a title. Not Maybe not deserves a title shot, but, like, this guy deserves, like, a top five guy. Give him Sandhagen or something. Give him maybe even Cruz. But like Bautista, let's look at the record. UFC Korea lost his debut to Sandhagen. No shame there. You know, wins over Miles Johns. Lost to Trevin Jones by TKO. Trevin Jones is the Cody Garban victim, by the way. Um, Jay Perrin decision. Brian Kelleher submission. Congratulations. Um, Benito Lopez submission. Congratulations. Guido Canetti, submission. Congratulations. Uh, Damon Blackshear, decision. I thought he lost that fight. I thought that was a robbery. And that was Damon Blackshear coming off a weak turnaround, cutting weight to bantamweight twice. That was not even a catch weight. It was a bantamweight fight. Blackshear had to cut weight twice and fight a week later. And I still think he won. And then he fights Ricky Simone. It looks decent. But let's be honest, is Ricky Simone that good? Maybe not. At this stage, he's kind of looking like he's just very mid. I think if Jose Aldo fought Ricky Simone, he would shoot him the fuck up and TKO him probably. Batista, get a strong third round against him. And look, do, do I think he's potentially on the source and might just outgas Aldo here and use his EPO powers to win? Perhaps. And now, that that is the worry because there was, there was, is always that bad feeling where you're like, why the fuck is this guy an underdog? And you're like, oh, maybe he just loses. But I think this is the same as like... Not not the same, but similar to like Whitaker being like a slight favourite against Dick Ram. Or like some of these fights where you're like, why was that guy an underdog? He, or why was that close on the odds? Like he was clearly going to win. But yeah, I just don't rate any of Bautista's wins that highly. Now, obviously, he can be improving. Like Simone, Blackshear, they're, they're decent. But then Jose Aldo... His opponents are just so much better. He's got eight losses, right? Let me read out who those eight losses are to. Marab, Petey Yarn, Robbery Against Marais, Volkanovski, Holloway, and McGregor. Those are Jose Aldo's professional losses. And then one way back in the day in 2005. 2005, he got submitted. Who cares? But UFC losses, I'm not kidding. Apart from Marais, are literally all to UFC champions. And the Marais fight was a robbery. McGregor, Holloway. Volkanovski, Jan, Marab. Marab just won the belt. I know I was trying to use that stat before and people were saying, oh, Marab's not champ. Marab is now champ. So unless you count the Marais fight as a win for Marais, which I don't, I thought that was a robbery, um, all of his losses are to UFC champions. Do I think Mario Batista is going to become a UFC champion? No. And if he wins this fight, we might have to line up Mario Batista for the belt and just assume he's going to win the belt because Jose Aldo does not lose to anyone who's not a champion or becomes a champion. That's just a fact. Um... So I think his wins are just better. Martinez, Font, Munoz, Vera, Moicano, Stevens, Edgar. Like, this guy wins fights and he does it impressively. Look, the there's been some losses there, sure, sure. But, like, even when he goes down to featherweight after the Volk fight, close fight with Marais, and then they gave him an interim... Or they gave him a vacant title fight after that because they knew that he should have won that fight against Jan. Loses to Jan by TKO right at the end of the fight, whatever. Jan beats people. Jan would fucking smoke Batista. Cheeto beats him clean. Munoz beats him clean. Font whoops his ass over five. Comes back, fights Mar- Marab, loses, stuffs all of Marab's takedowns. That's another thing. I don't think Batista's taken him down. 
even at a, even at altitude, even when Marab was able to kind of outgas him and push a pace on him, he still couldn't take him down. Do I think Batista's going to be a more effective, better wrestler than Marab? No, I don't. I don't think he's taking down Aldo. And if you don't take out down Aldo, you're striking with Jose Aldo. And the list of guys that strike with Jose Aldo, typically, unless, again, they're Petey Yarn, Volkanovsky, or Holloway, they don't do pretty well, or Connor, they don't do well striking with Aldo. I think it's going to look like the Martinez fight. I even think Martinez is like a better fighter, or better striker at least, than Bautista. Um, and yeah, if you're not taking down Aldo, you ain't beating him, and I don't think you're taking him down, because I don't think... If this was like a Peyton Talbot in like a year or two's time, and maybe we're like, oh, maybe he could catch him on the feet, or even like someone like a Vinicius Oliveira, there's like a chance he could catch him. But Bautista's not some one-shot power guy, he doesn't win fights by TKO. When's the last time he's won a fight by TKO? When? Uh, let me check. Um, he's got three wins on his record by TKO. And the last one by TKO was, I'm pretty sure, on, oh, he finished Miles Johns. Congrats. In 2020. Like, I don't know. I'm going around this a long-winded way of just saying, I think Jose Aldo's going to win and whoop his ass. But I have a bad feeling that Batista's going to fluke it somehow or push a pace on him. Aldo might gas out. He might pressure him and catch him somehow. Because Aldo, I will say, if you're looking at the technical aspect, um, he does sometimes struggle on the back foot. If you press him or press, uh, pressure him or press him against the cage, he can struggle a little bit. You know, Martinez didn't have much success, but the success he did have was kind of when he was making Aldo go backwards. But I think Aldo knows what he's doing. I think his boxing's crisp. And he got that fight out of the way. And honestly, I think he's actually going to look better than when he did against Martinez. Martinez is coming back after like two years off, basically. You know, fighting in front of your home crowd, probably a bit nervous. He's going to be fine here. He knows he's chilling. He knows he's made that comeback already. He doesn't have to worry about, oh, maybe I don't have it anymore. He knows he's still got it. He's going to be confident. He's going to come out there and I think either finish or just tune up Batista to a decision. Maybe Batista gives himself a good account in the third and wins the round just having a bit better cardio, but I think Aldo's going to secure the first two comfortably. Uh, I hope he gets a finish, but I think it'll probably go a decision. Uh, let's move on, though, to the co-main event. Next up, I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Uh, I'm picking Pennington. I couldn't care less about this fight. I'm just not going to pick Pena, who's literally fought less recently than Michael Chandler. This is not happening. Um, look, maybe she wins. I could see her winning because I just don't... Ref I refuse to believe we're going to live in a world where Raquel Pennington can call herself a defending champion. But Pena looked uh, completely awful against Nunes in the rematch. And before that, she didn't even fucking deserve a title shot. She was coming off one win over Sarah McMahon by submission. Before that, she literally got submitted by Jerain Demandamy. Jerain Derandamy. Um, she was... And she lost to Shevchenko. Like, Bo, she's 3-3 three and three in her last six. And going into her title fight, she was 2-2 two and two in her last four. Like, it was a fluky title fight. It was a fluky result. She shouldn't have won that fight. It was retarded. Um, you know, everyone has a fucking day off sometimes, Nunes was just completely off in that fight, tunes her up, whoops her ass in the rematch, easy, she literally goes away for multiple years, has not fought, about to come back, Pennington, I don't think he's that good, um, but I think she's just a bit more effective, and I think she can do a bit more here, I don't think she's going to get submitted, she's been submitted once in her career, and she's on a win streak, she's on a six fight win streak, now if I'm looking at the two of them, I am going to just back consistency, and even though literally only one of those six wins is by dis uh, is by finish, I don't think she needs to. I think this is like a lock of the fucking century to go to the scorecards. She beat Marabono Silva. She beat Vieira. She beat Aspen Ladd. She beat Chieson. She beat Kanzad. She beat some other random cunt. She beat Aldana. You know, she lost to Nunes too. Who cares? Couldn't care less. Whatever. She lost to Durandami. Durandami is actually solid back then, but she went away and became shit. Um, but yeah, like Pennington... I think she's just more consistent at this stage, and I don't know how Pena's going to look after two years off. She's going to be yapping. She's probably going to go in there, running in like a retard, looking like how she did against Nunes. And yeah, this is probably going to go a decision, probably going to be terrible to watch. Uh, but yeah, you know, we got main and co-main event, both incredibly undeserving title challenges. Uh, we'll see if either, if either one of them come out on top, it's going to be a rough day. Uh, but I'm picking Pennington to win. Let's move on, though, to the main event. Main event time, Alex Pereira versus Khalil Rauchy. Man, people forget, man, Khalil Rauchy fights like you owe him money. This guy's nasty. You do not want to stand with this guy. 
Um, yeah, I'm not picking Khalil Roundtree, who got KO'd by Johnny Walker. It's not happening. Look, maybe he fucking flukes it, but I think we've proven Pereira is immune to fucking random plot armor flukes. He's not losing. I refuse to believe Pereira is going to lose to Khalil Roundtree, who lost to March in Pratchett. I'm sorry, he's not winning. He is on a five-fight win streak. Let me read out who the win streak is against. Bukowskis, Robeson, Jacoby, robbery by the way, Dorcas and Smith. Smith by third round TKO. Like, come on. I don't care if you KO I don't care if you kicked Robeson in the body this one time and people say you fought people you fight like people owe him money. Like, I don't care. He's lost to Prachnio. He got finished by Kutalaba and he got finished by Johnny Walker. I don't care that he went to Thailand and Rogan wouldn't shut the fuck up about it because he came back and he was a completely different fighter. He was a Thai stance, you know. Nobody had Muay Thai like Khalil Roundtree. Um, he's not even the best Muay Thai fighter in the UFC. Um, I'm sorry, he's not winning. If he wins, it's a fluke and Pereira is just shit because Pereira should not lose unless he's just taking him lightly and just thinks he's going to win this fight with a breeze, which he should win this fight with a breeze. But if he just doesn't take him seriously and has his hands down, for some, I don't think Pereira's like that. I don't think he's doing that. I think he's going to win. Poetan, you know, I refuse to believe the guy that beat Adesanya, Jamal Hill, Yuri Prohaska, Jan Blachowicz, Sean Strickland. I refuse to believe that he's going to lose to Khalil Roundtree, who lost to Marcin Prachnio. It's not happening. Um, so yeah, I'm picking Poetan. He's going to win by KO. Um, look, at some point on this card, there's going to be a head kick KO. We're in Salt Lake City. It's just a fact. There's going to be a head kick KO. I, I wonder which fight it's going to be. Um, because it's going to be one of them. There's going to be a head kick KO. Last time, there were two. The time before that, obviously, one with the main event. And then last time, Kopolov got one. And then uh, Gaethje got one. Someone's going to get head kick KO'd. I'm going to pick Pereira by head kick KO just for the fun of it. He's probably going to win by left hook. But uh, I'm backing someone on this card to win by head kick KO. So I might put up a poll on my channel. Who is the most likely to win by head kick KO? Uh, we'll see. But I do think Poitain's going to win. There's no way around three. Rogan's going to be glazing him the whole way through the fight. Rogan is going to be having an absolute spaz. He's mad on Mahagami. How the hell did Pereira make 185? He's just going to be doing all the Roganisms. Um, Khalil Roundtree's a beast. He fights like people owe him money. Um, that Anthony Smith fight was nasty. That KO was brutal. Um, like I'm sorry, but people editing Khalil Roundtree kicking Carl Robeson in the body. Carl Robeson sucks. I'm not going to be convinced by some random casual fan on TikTok who got his MMA knowledge. Carl Robeson is 9-7, and seven, by the way. By the way, 9-7 and seven record. Uh, and ended his career on a five-fight loss streak. <laughs> I'm sorry. He ended his career on a five-fight loss streak, got cut from the UFC after getting finished by Zedruku, and lost to Henderson Ferreira on game-bred bare-knuckle MMA. Um, so yeah, he's not, Carl Robeson is not a good a fighter. So I'm sorry, an edit of you kicking him in the body is not going to convince me you're good. An edit of him kicking him in the body with clips of Rogan's talking about Khalil Rauchy going to Thailand, acting like that makes you immediately just elite at fighting, is not, <laughs> he's not winning. If he wins, I'm going to be fucking pissed off and I might say the N word. No, I won't do that. But like, still... Pereira better not fucking lose this, otherwise the sport makes no sense. Anyway, that's the channel fucking video, everything done. Um, I'll literally have a mental breakdown if Roundtree wins, because it will just piss me off so much. Um, anyway, like, subscribe, leave a comment, follow my Instagram, Left Lane MMA. Those are my picks. Who do you reckon is going to get head kick KO'd? Because someone's going someone's gonna to get it. Uh, but anyway, what other videos do you guys want to see? Let me know in the comments. Peace out. Goodbye.